Hello and welcome to anyone and everyone watching. Today I'm kicking off a new six-part series in which, as you can see by the title, I'll be going over the best part-time drivers of the 2022 season. I'll be making one video for each driver in order of how good they performed, in my opinion, relative to their equipment and experience, so kind of like a top five, and then before number one, I'll make a video with a handful of honorable mentions. And while I am ranking for this series based only on 2022 stats, each of these videos will be like a little mini documentary into these drivers' entire careers, as most of them have really interesting stories and paths they've taken, with all types of ups and downs to have ended up racing a limited schedule this past season in the top three divisions of NASCAR. So without any further ado, let's get started with the fifth best part-time driver of 2022, Kyle Weatherman. On oh, just one quick disclaimer, my criteria for a part-time driver is that they must not have competed in Cup Xfinity Trucks or the National Arca Series full-time. So, for example, even though AJ Allmendinger did outstanding in his part-time Cup ride, he is ineligible due to being a full-time Xfinity driver. Also, any drivers like Sammy Smith that would have competed in every Arca race if they were old enough, or drivers like Kurt Busch and Alex Bowman, who would have competed in every cup race if not for their injuries, will also not be included. So, Kyle Weatherman. Hailing from Winsville, Missouri, Kyle got started in the National Arca Series at the age of 15 for his family-owned and operated team, Weatherman Motorsports. And he didn't waste any time. In his debut at Salem Speedway in 2013, Weatherman took his number 11 Dodge home in 4th place, being guys like all-time Arca wins leader and that year's champion Frank Kimmel, as well as future multi-time truck winner Grant Infinger. In his 5 starts that year, including Salem, Kyle walked away with a stunning 4 top 5s, including back-to-back -back runner-ups to finish off his season. Needless to say, he caught the eyes of a lot of team owners, especially the 2012 Arca Championship team, Rulo Brothers Racing, who signed him on part-time for the following season. Unfortunately, Kyle took about a half-step back performance-wise with only one top five and six top tens in his eight starts that season. Regardless, with only one career DNF up to that point with a crash at Winchester, it was clear Kyle could take care of his equipment and certainly had winning potential, and because of that, another very solid ARCA team and future championship winning team, Cunningham Motorsports, would pick up Weatherman for the majority of the 2015 schedule. In his fifth start that year, he would pick up his first career ARCA win at the New Jersey Motorsports Park, a road course of all places. By no means did Kyle have extensive road course experience as he raced primarily Bandoleros and Legends cars before making the move to ARCA, so this win was very impressive and showed off his adaptability on top of just raw talent. The next three races would see Kyle sidelined as he was still only 17 years old, meaning he could not compete on any oval tracks greater than one and a half miles long. Despite this, he still carried on his winning momentum by sweeping the pull awards for his next three starts in a row. Despite not getting another race win for the rest of the season, Kyle sure came close with 10 top fives and 13 top tens, including a whopping five total runner-up finishes. With only one DNF and an average finish of 6.2, Kyle was easily the highest finishing part-time driver in points, still coming in 10th overall after being ineligible for five races. All of this was good enough for Rookie of the Year honors as well as, even more impressively, the ARCA Short Track Championship. That year, a new team, Lyra Motorsports, would also reach out to Weatherman for both the team and driver's truck series debut. They only ran the season finale at Homestead, and Weatherman did about all he was expected to do, making it to the finish in a reasonable 23rd place, albeit three laps down. For 2016, Weatherman once again switched teams, this time to the Lyra Motorsports ARCA car. While I'm unsure whether or not Kyle had a say in leaving Cunningham, it was a mistake either way, as the results took a spin in the wrong direction. Things started out promising, with Kyle delivering a third-place finish in his Daytona debut, but in his eight starts for the team, he only had notched three top fives and four top tens, including Daytona. For those familiar with the Cup Series and not so much with the ARCA Series, you might be wondering what I'm talking about, because those stats would be very respectable in Cup. However, in Arco, with slightly smaller fields, at a time when up to a fourth of the field was start in parking and with top equipment, you're more or less expected to finish top 10 every race if you wanted a shot at getting moved up into the NASCAR ranks. Anyway, entering the ninth race of the season at Madison, Weatherman was still sitting third in points with plenty of time to come alive and still well within the championship hunt. 
but no stats could have helped him for what came next. Due to a lack of funding, Lyra Motorsports shut down its operations immediately, leaving all of its drivers without a ride. Kyle quickly scrambled to find a ride with Mason Mitchell Motorsports before the race weekend, and after what I'm sure was an extremely stressful week, Kyle left it all behind him on the track and went on to lead over half the laps at Madison before settling for yet another runner-up finish. This run was apparently good enough for Mitchell to hire him back for the next race at Winchester, in which Kyle came in third, but after that, he was officially out of a ride. And just like that, after a win and seven second-place finishes in Arca at only 18 years old, Kyle's left with only one option that no driver ever wants to face, bringing back the family team. Over the course of the remaining season, Kyle was able to put together five more races in which he rather impressively netted two top fives and another top ten right off the bat, but in his final two races, he would crash out in both, his only DNFs of the season. In one of these, a season finale at Kansas, he endured multiple heart impacts and was shaken up so badly that he had to be taken to the local hospital for further evaluation. Luckily, Weatherman suffered no serious injuries and he was just heavily bruised. At this point, Kyle's career was also looking quite bruised up, but thankfully due to his standout performances in his two races for Mason Mitchell Motorsports the previous season, the team arranged another part-time ARCA schedule with him for the upcoming season. The first half of 2017 was pretty much the same old story, as in seven stars he brought home three top fives and a top ten, with once again a runner-up finish which came at Nashville Fairgrounds. After a fifth place at Iowa, the halfway mark in the ARCA schedule that year, Kyle was never called back by Mitchell, and thus his entire career was put on pause. As a team owner at this point, you see a driver who clearly has potential, is very adaptable, and is able to take care of his equipment for the most part. He's certainly no generational talent, but if he's got funding, he'll get the job done and might just be a good long-term investment, especially for an up-and-coming team. Well, one team in particular, who was just getting their feet under them and has since become a household name in the Cup Series, was not willing to miss out on a chance to hire Kyle Weatherman. And that team was, well, Rick Ware Racing. <laughs> I, I hope I hyped them up enough. Anyway, yes, none other than Rick Ware Racing decided to take Kyle straight out of Arca with one truck start and zero Xfinity starts to his name and just drop him off in their bucket of nuts and bolts number 51 car and see if he floats. Well, I'm not sure what kind of results you guys might be anticipating he got, but he came in last of all running cars, double-digit laps down in both his starts at Martinsville and Phoenix. Considering Weatherman's complete lack of experience in the top three divisions of NASCAR, and given that he was driving quite possibly the worst car in the field, it was absolutely no surprise that he performed miserably, and honestly, I can only applaud him for keeping his head on straight while the entire field was flying by him twice as fast as him and not getting caught up in any incidents. After those two races, the 2017 season was a wrap, and heading into 2018 for the first time, Kyle had absolutely no plans at all. But in a call that might have saved him from complete relevancy, another, um, well-known cup team offered him a ride for the Chicagoland race. And that would be the one and only Starcom Racing. Rest in peace. The only other team that could match Rick Ware Racing in the late 2010s in regard to terrible equipment decided in what was a questionable decision to say the least, to field a second car, the number 99 for Weatherman in select races for the rest of the year. In his seven total starts, Kyle only cracked the top 30 once at Las Vegas, where he finished 26th, three laps down, mainly at the expense of 10 drivers posting DNFs. But once again, he did exactly what he needed to. He avoided any and all drama and finished every race except for Kansas, which was due to transmission problems. Now heading into 2019, Kyle had a pretty solid resume, 50 ARCA starts with one win and overall impressive stats, as well as 9 cup starts with no on-track incidents. Well, fortunately or unfortunately for him, old reliable Rick Ware Racing was back at his doorsteps, and with no other options, he signed on for 2 more cup races and 4 Xfinity races with them. In Cup, Kyle put a quick end to his clean streak as in the Michigan race, he got loose all by himself and backed hard into the outside wall on lap 71 ending his day and resulting in a last place finish. Then at Bristol, he would make it to the end, but a whopping 16 laps behind and 4 laps off the car one position ahead of him, Quinn Houff. Uh, yikes. His Xfinity season went about the same as in 4 starts with Rick Ware Racing, 3 for Mike Harmon Racing, and 1 for Jimmy Means Racing. He didn't succumb to mechanical problems in only 3 of his races one of which was his only top 25 finish of this season, a very solid 22nd with a Mike Harmon team at Kansas. 
To be honest, I have no idea if all the mechanical failures were planned starting parks. As at this point, there were uh, a few teams still practicing it regularly, but regardless, that solid outing for Mike Harmon Racing laid the groundwork for a bit of a career recovery over the next two years. In 2020, Kyle Weatherman and MHR partnered up again, this time to run the majority of the schedule together. The year of COVID featured very high ups and very low downs for Kyle, but in the end, he was able to finally show everyone for the first time since 2017 that he could still put together a great race, even in horrible equipment. Starting out with a good, after three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back races marred by mechanical failure, Kyle went on a head-turning streak of three top 15s in a row with a flat 15th places at Pocono and the Indy Road Course before putting on the performance of his career up to that point. In the Shady Race 200 at Kentucky Speedway, the uh, Cole Custer win weekend, by the way, Kyle Weatherman drove every single fiber out of the notoriously back-of-the-pack number 47 machine and ended up with a jaw-dropping 8th place finish, making up 5 positions during an overtime restart. For however many years Mike Harmon Racing had been around, they had yet to score a single top 10 until Weatherman's drive of a lifetime at Kentucky. Needless to say, this was single-handedly what officially put Weatherman's name back in the conversation among other underrated up-and-coming drivers. Throughout the rest of the season, Kyle picked up four more top 20s, but what thankfully for him most forgot due to his early season performance was his four crashes, all of which occurred during the first stages of the race. In fact, the day after his 8th place run at Kentucky, he crashed out of the second race of the doubleheader all by himself before making a single circuit. Then, on top of numerous more DNFs due to mechanical problems, Kyle would crash out at Darlington on lap 5, at Las Vegas on lap 7, and the Charlotte Road Course on only lap 13. All that wrecking reminds me of another 47 car driver, but that's besides the point. Going into the 2021 season, Mike Harmon was able to see past all the damage costs and decided to sign Kyle on full-time in the Xfinity Series alongside Bailey Curry. Fans who had kept up the previous year hoped to see Weatherman once again outperform his equipment and maybe have another big upset finish, but that just really never happened. After a promising start with a very impressive 15th place run in Daytona, followed up by a 16th on the road course, his momentum stagnated as he could only muster up five more top 20s over the rest of the year in one of which he would tie his season-best finish of 15th at Richmond. Even further on the downside, in a year of more teams than spots in the field for the Xfinity Series, Kyle would fail to qualify for Coda, the Charlotte Oval, and Road America, leading up to a fairly underwhelming 24th place finish in the final standings. On the bright side, he was able to reclaim his consistency from his early ARCA and Cup days, as he made it to the end of all but three races, only one of which was being due to a crash. And that leads us to the most recent season of 2022, the season that put Kyle Weatherman on this list and enticed me to make a full video on him. Over the offseason, Kyle announced he'd be joining up with DGM Racing for a handful of races, and whether he knew it or not, the choice to jump ship from Mike Harmon Racing turned out to be the right one, as the once improving organization downsized to one car and proceeded to not qualify for more races than it qualified for with the ill-prepared number 47 machine getting sent to the garage with mechanical problems in nearly every race it did make. Most definitely, with a sigh of relief, Weatherman put together a best run of 16th at Auto Club before matching his best career finish of 8th at the Spring Atlanta race. While an incredible feat nonetheless, he was overshadowed this time by his teammate Mason Massey, who, in the same race, scored his best career finish of 6th. Also for Kyle, that was the last race he had planned for DGM, so once again, he was on the outside looking in. Luckily for him, though, a development on the other side of the Xfinity garage, which soon ensured that his wait to return to the driver's seat would be very short-lived. Very, very short. The new Jesse Awuji Motorsports team, co-founded by Hall of Fame NFL star Emmett Smith, was off to uh, humble beginnings, to say the least. To say the most, it was nothing short of a disaster. After the first six races of the season, the planned full-time owner-driver Jesse Awuji himself had come up with the best finish of 27th, coupled with two DNQs. Normally, this could be played off as a new team growing pains, but with Jesse's inexperience in NASCAR, any reasonable person could gather this was a problem that was not going to fix itself anytime soon. To make matters worse, like the previous season, more teams were attempting to qualify for races than there were spots for. So if the JIM team couldn't get their act together quick, they would be a ways out from the top 35 in owner points and subject to missing many more races. 
A new driver was a must, and with one quick haul, Kyle was back in action, and the entire JIM organization was counting on him. Right away, Kyle did exactly what he needed to, just to put the car in the show and not wreck it, as he came home and expected 28th place, four laps off the leader. I guess he was just getting warmed up, though, because the next weekend at Martinsville, he was back in the spotlight for all the right reasons. Following another solid qualifying pass, Weatherman went on to deliver Jesse Woody's team their best finish by far, crossing the line in 16th. With the bar set quite low for the 34 team, this run definitely turned some heads, and it attracted some small headlines, but I don't think anyone was prepared for what came next from Kyle and the JIM crew. The next weekend, Kyle got to sit back and watch Jesse once again fail to qualify, this time at Talladega. If they hadn't realized it yet, now the JIM team most definitely had come to terms with just how reliant they would need to be on Kyle to turn their season around. After a long and tiresome Dover race, which resulted in a 27th place finish because of this bonehead move by David Starr, giving the 34 cars significant damage early on, Kyle came back with a vengeance the next race at Darlington. Qualifying back in 31st, he and his crew slowly dialed in the car bit by bit and never gave up the whole day, which saw Weatherman creep up to a very solid 17th place at the time of caution with 12 laps to go. Now thanks to Anthony Alfredo and Joe Graff Jr.'s shenanigans, the entire field was left wondering whether or not to pit, and what would turn out to be an excellent call, the 34 team would decide to take their chances and stay out, hoping and praying that by lining up in the third row, he'd be able to hold off enough cars to stay ahead of where he previously ran. On the restart, Weatherman held most of his ground, but before he could make two laps, another car who had stayed out, the 48 of Tyler Reddick, blew a tire and slammed hard into the outside wall, bringing out the final caution of the day. Now back into fifth row, and surrounded by an army of fresh tires, things were no longer looking so hot for Kyle. Nevertheless, he kept his bearings and drove the final two laps as hard as he possibly could, and in part assisted by a wreck in the final turn between Jeremy Clements and Ryan Truex, both of whom were running top 10, Weatherman crossed the line in a new organization best of 12th place. This was a huge morale builder for the entire team, and foreshadowing proved they can contend for top 10s given the right circumstances. Also, for reference, out of the seven drivers that stayed out with Kyle, the only two that finished ahead of him were colleague racing teammates AJ Allmendinger and Daniel Hemrick, and the next closest of them was Tommy Joe Martins, who dropped all the way back to 17th. While the spring Martinsville and Darlington races set the tone for Weatherman's performance the rest of the season, after getting wrecked at Charlotte, exiting with power steering breakage in Nashville, and giving back driving duties to the boss man for Portland, Road America, and Atlanta, it wasn't until race number 18 in New Hampshire when Kyle finally got his mojo back, and in a major way. Running between 20th and 25th the majority of the race, it was looking to be another good drive, but certainly nothing out of the ordinary, as at this point Kyle had already single-handedly turned a 34 machine into a mid-pack car after it began the season as a back marker, and one of the worst ones of that. Towards the end of the New Hampshire race, opportunity came in high abundance for not only Kyle, but for every underfunded team still on track. As with around 50 laps to go, nearly every regular frontrunner had crashed out, or in Noah Gregson and Landon Castle's cases, were driving illegal and soon-to-be-disqualified cars. Kyle took full advantage of these unique circumstances and drove his own race, crossing the line in P10. But due to the aforementioned disqualifications, officially earned yet another, and just still as impressive, 8th place finish. This was easily the peak of the season results-wise for the JIM team, but by no means is that a bad thing. If Kyle had bested a P8 in the JD Motorsports Allied Chevy, he'd be at least a couple spots higher up in this video series. Anyway, after these outstanding runs, it became unusual to see Kyle run outside the top 20 for the remainder of the season, as in the 11 starts he made after the New Hampshire race, he scored 7 more top 20s, including two 14th places at Las Vegas and the season finale at Phoenix. And those 14th place runs came with no gimmicks or assistance whatsoever. Both races had no more than 3 total DNFs, so no ifs, ands, or buts. Kyle Weatherman proved that he is a wheelman, and any reasonable team owner should be keeping him in mind. That is, if they can ever pry him away from Jesse Awuji Motorsports, as in an interview from this November, Awuji himself said, quote, But I'm Kyle, he's here with us for the long run. I want him to be here for the long run, so somehow, some way, we're going to figure out how to run both of us, end quote. 
That being said, Kyle Weatherman wrapped up his 2022 Xfinity season with two top 10s, a 21.6 average finish, which is easily the best of his career, along with a 22nd place finish in the final points despite missing 10 races. Without any further context, those numbers alone prove that Kyle's 2022 season was one of the best of any part-time drivers, and that is why he comes in overall as the fifth best in my opinion. With the context that he transformed a brand new team from the butt of a joke into a respected mid-pack organization that under the right circumstances can get top 10s, and I would argue has the speed to win a super speedway race, one could easily argue that Kyle deserves an even higher rank among this year's part-time racers. Well, I hope you all enjoyed part one of this project, and if you did, make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button as you won't want to miss out on the upcoming parts. Also, as usual, we're putting together another weekly Silly Season News recap this weekend, so stay tuned for that as well. And finally, thank you again for all the support on my latest news recaps. All those videos have done very well, and I'm up to, uh, I think, around 40 subscribers at this point after only starting this channel a few weeks ago. So yeah, again, thank you to everyone watching, but that is all for today. So until next time, peace out.